Hi again. Today's question is a very difficult one. It's what is your favorite permaculture book? Now that's not something I can easily answer. I have many favorites, but it got me thinking that perhaps rather than just pick one or try and tell you about 20 in one go, perhaps I might pick one a month, for instance. So the most obvious one to start with this month, um, because I've recently received it, is this one, which is David Holmgren's latest book, Retro Suburbia. Uh, David is one of the founders, co-founders of Permaculture. Um, and he's written a number of books over the years. This is most certainly the largest. Um, you can see there's a lot to it. This is the first proper big book that he's written since um, this one which was published in 2002. Um, it's a very excellent book, but it's quite, it's really targeted at more kind of councils and academic, the academic realm. As you can see, there's not a lot of pictures in it. Um, and that's fine, I, I got to the end of it, I enjoyed it, I found it uh, a good read, but I do like pictures and I find that pictures make a big difference when it comes to a book. So um, it's kind of difficult to, show this too much, but you get a sense that this is the book with a lot of photographs and drawings um, and immediately is visually engaging for me. Um, I love pictures because say pictures um, save a lot of words. <laughs> There's also quite a lot of words in here. 500 odd pages. Now, um, is it worth getting? Is it worth the effort? Um, Absolutely. Anything by David Holmgren has got to be worth having a good look at. Um, he says right at the beginning that it's very much a book aimed at people that live in the kind of landscape that he does. Because you can, if you write a book, you either have to be very, very broad about all kinds of things, which is essentially what he was doing here. And, uh, and then you can't be quite so specific. Whereas he says, at the beginning of this book, this is very much targeted at. Uh, he's Australian, he lives in a particular kind of suburban landscape. And for people that live in this landscape, that's where his uh, life has been spent, where he has his expertise, where he's been experimenting. Um, the people that he knows, the community projects he's involved with and so on. So it's written very much with that in mind at the beginning he says he's very much writing about this and he uses an example that he calls Aussie Street um, which he describes the evolution of Aussie Street from the 1950s 40s and 50s through to the present day and describes the people kind of moving in and moving out of the houses and what they've done and so on and uh, for me I found that interesting but I found it more difficult to engage with because I was less connected with the culture well but it does also explain how houses, you know, and it gives me a sense of um, why certain houses had another house built in the garden. It started off with a big garden. Now you've got a big house in the other half of the garden and so on. So um, the cover kind of tells a little bit of a story. And inside the book is broken up into three main sections. You can see on the edges of the book here, the three colour coding. So this first one is the built environment. This is all to do with houses and how we construct things. Then there's the uh, the biological environment. He's gone with three Bs to help kind of, I suppose, remember that. The biological environment this is about food and farming and how we do all of that in suburbia, which is a very particular kind of um, landscape. You know, quite a lot of houses close together with usually with quite big gardens, not always with the same kind of degree and number of businesses and so on in between them as you would find in a town or a city. And then this last one is the behavioral um, environment. Says so how do we interact with each other um, and so on and so forth. So there's many things for me reading the book and I haven't quite got to the end yet. Um, there's a lot here that relates to anywhere. And while he's describing how they relate to where he lives and the people. There's a lot of case studies in here of people doing different things, actual, um, and describing how uh, there's retrofitting photographs of people doing things, very nice diagrams and so on. Um, he also relates, a lot of the time he 
has these little icons that he um, initially created in this book. Um, the 12 icons that relate to the 12 principles that he's kind of, he combined and rephrased, if you like, to try and make them nice and easy. And I particularly like the icons. For me, they're a really helpful way of kind of summing up uh, what a principle is about. So throughout the book here, he's been using these icons, in a sense, putting them into um, how would you use that within this particular context. And uh, as you can see, a number of different icons with different things. And so speaking from his own experience and from many other people who have been doing um, permaculture kind of things, I particularly like um, at the beginning of the built section, uh, he talks about things to look out for. You know, we're in the process at the moment of trying to find somewhere with a bit more land where I can teach from rather than just uh, garden. And uh, he's got a really nice little checklist. Again, that can be a little bit contextual in the sense that what he's talking about is very specifically about uh, suburban houses and how to rate them in terms of you know whether they're worth going for are they on a corner do they have a triple garage that kind of thing and they have all of those things have scoring levels and some of those things won't relate to me at all in Britain <laughs> living in a quite a different landscape but the the basic ideas apply anywhere and so I would most definitely recommend this book. It's a lovely book. I look forward to getting to the end of it and also starting to think about how I would use this more in my teaching. Uh, as I say, I've only had it for a few weeks, um, but and it will, in Britain, set you back about £55, but you get a lot for your money and it'll keep you busy for a long time. And it's one of those books that you can read from cover to cover or you can just dip into at any particular point. Uh, there's a very good index and so on, so you can quite easily uh, at the beginning here, all the chapter headings and the subheadings and so on, so you can quite easily skip through and say, ah oh, yes, I'm really interested in that and find it very quickly. So yeah, my first book, my face first favourite book uh, for this month is Retro Suburbia by David Holmgren.